it is <laughs> inevitable that sooner or later governments will have to confront the debt, the debt pile. And um, none of the measures seem to be without significant burden on, on GDP, like spending cuts or tax increases, as well as uh, political costs. Is perhaps widespread inflation increase the most likely scenario of lowering debt burden or? No, that's a great question. So we wrote an article on this. I'm getting a lot of questions from my clients. And again, Northern Trust, as you probably know, is a global organization. Yeah. So we have substantial operations in Europe, Australia, Asia. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the places I used to fly, but I've been grounded for the, the last- Americas, time. obviously. <laughs> Hard to remember. Yeah. So uh, I have gotten a lot of questions because uh, those of us who learned economics uh, know that if there's too much money chasing too few goods, you get inflation. Yeah. I don't think it's as much a worry this time around, and here's why. Around the world, and this is evident in the data for the Eurozone, uh, the United States and the UK, a lot of the money that the central bank has pushed out is not circulating at the same speed. Mm -hmm. Banks are holding extra reserves yeah. because the credit environment is uncertain. Mm -hmm. Household saving in a number of different markets is also up. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the precautionary steps that are being taken has prevented an excess of demand that can be inflationary. Mm -hmm. In addition, inflation around the world, at least in developed markets, was well below target. So most central banks have a 2% target, as you know, and most central banks were having a very hard time getting inflation up to that level. And the reason is uh, technology, uh, which is making things uh, less expensive, including e-commerce. So it's a lot easier for you and me to shop around for a good deal on something online. Mm -hmm. uh, and the number of products and services that you can uh, get online is, is expanding every week, I think. Uh, companies are becoming much more efficient in the way that they can deliver goods and services. I would add globalization uh, has also brought down inflation in a lot of ways. And I think that many of those trends with the possible exception of globalization are probably going to get stronger in the years ahead and push inflation down further. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, the other thing I, I point out and sometimes I get pushback here is that uh, central banks, I think are willing or want a little bit more inflation than we have today. Mm -hmm. uh, but what if inflation did get, let's say to almost 3%, what central bankers would say, from Madame Lagarde to Jay Powell to um, uh, Andrew Bailey and others, is, well, we know what we would do. We would raise interest rates. Mm -hmm. Well, the politics of that, I think, are going to be a little bit difficult. I don't think they'll have to make that decision for a few years, but the politics around that would be very difficult. Mm -hmm. So the, the conclusion that I reached in, in the article was is that we're much more likely to have deflation than inflation in the next few years just because the economic damage of the pandemic mm -hmm. is going to take a long time to reverse. Mm -hmm.